nursingschoolandbeyond.com and I want to say welcome to the channel and today's video is going to be about accelerated bachelor degree programs for nursing students. Um, I really wanted to touch on this topic because they're gaining a lot of popularity but I feel like a lot of people don't know how to prepare uh, for getting into an accelerated um, BSM program and they need a lot of information before they make that decision. You know, um, this is a very serious time commitment and financial commitment. So I wanted to really shed some light and give you some useful information that'll help you make a decision as to whether this would be the kind of educational path that would fit your lifestyle and that was right for you. So I'm just going to have my phone here because there are some important points that I really want to get into this video. Number one, um, getting into an accelerated bachelor's degree program is extremely tough. They're very competitive. I know the one that I was accepted to um, got over 350 applicants in their application cycle and they only accepted 30. Um, they have to keep the classes small because they want the teacher to student ratio to be balanced. They don't want too many students. So, with that being said, there are, t uh, there are about, a, about three points that I want to touch on about getting into an accelerated nursing program. Number one, you must... I think what really helps them determine what students they're going to let into the program is how you come across in your essays and in your letters of recommendation. Uh, my thing is, is that if you are in the medical field, if you have done some type of entry level medical work, um, like being a CNA or home health aide or your PCA in the hospital, uh, you have professional recommendations from other nurses, um, if, you, if you're networking and you're getting to know people, they will write recommendations for you. And to go into an accelerated nursing program and to have a recommendation from a nurse that you've worked with in the field looks extremely impressive. Not only does it look like you are really serious about becoming a nurse because you're taking the steps to uh, the found, you know, learning about nursing by working and earning as you learn, but it also makes you look really uh, mature because, and it makes you look like you have a futuristic um, outlook. You know, you, you know the big picture. You, you know that you wanna be a nurse, so you took the steps. You became um, a part of the nursing profession as a, you know, like a CNA or a PCA so that you get, get the exposure. And schools really like that. They really like people who take the bull by the horns and they, they take that initiative. So that's uh, one that I really, uh, that's one point I really recommend. Like, if, even if you're a part-time CNA or a part-time PCA or home health aide, just to get your foot into the door and get a recommendation from a nurse or a, super, a nursing supervisor and you show them your work ethic, that's gonna really help you um, get a job and get into a nursing program. Number two, your academic, um, your academic recommendation. Most recommendations that um, people get academically are of course going to be from their professor. Now a lot of people that do accelerated degree nursing programs um, are second career. This is their second career and so they're taking their prereqs maybe at a community college and they're nervous maybe about approaching the professor, but most professors are very open um, for doing recommendations, even if they don't know you as a person. If you're in their class and you are performing well and you're engaged with the content and the material, they have no problem with commenting on how you perform as a student because they want to see, accelerated nursing programs want to know that you can get the job done, that you can get in the classroom, that you can study, that you can retain the content, and that you can go and pass the NCLEX, because that's what, you know, essentially this is what it boils down to. So you can get your license, you must be able 
to um, retain that education and put it into practice and that's you know that's essentially what why they choose certain students if they can if they see that that's demonstrated and they can see it they're gonna pick you um, and when you write your essay that's the third point you want to make sure that it's an essay that really conveys your desire to be a lifelong learner because one thing that is very attractive is nurse our nursing students that understand that this is not just um, like school is not just it like that's not it you're making a commitment to be a lifelong learner because nursing is an art as well as, as a science and science is always changing it evolves constantly and so if you demonstrate to them in your essay that you have a desire and a passion for um, being a lifelong learner and amongst other things, I think that that will really speak volumes about your character and who you want to become as a nurse. So those are like my tips for the application process. Now, if you're planning on becoming or uh, going into an accelerated nursing program, you must make sure you plan early um, because you have to take about 25 credits of prerequisites. Now your prerequisites are going to include like anatomy and physiology part one and two, microbiology, uh, healthcare ethics, psychology, um, the lifespan, uh, developmental uh, psychology, and uh, I think perhaps maybe chemistry. It depends on your program. Some programs don't require it, some programs do. It just depends. Um, but all those programs, I mean all those classes, you can't take them all together. Because AMP, you can't take AMP2 unless you've taken AMP1, and you can't take micro unless you've taken both anatomy, physiology, part one and two. It, it, everything builds upon each other, and so you're gonna really have to um, make sure that you do this in a timely fashion. Some programs don't even allow you to apply until all your prerequisites are done. And some programs allow you to apply while you're completing your prerequisites. Again, you just ha it depends on which program you're going for and what their requirements are. But just keep that in mind. If you are applying to a program like this, you're going to have to plan ahead so that you can get everything that you need to get done. The second point that we're gonna touch on is the cost of accelerated programs. They are extremely expensive. If you can afford it, God bless you, because you're gonna need it. You're gonna need, um, you know, if you had, <laughs> I, I don't wanna sound grim. If you had the money to do it, pay cash for it, go right ahead. So a lot of people don't. A lot of people have to take out loans. And um, if you're willing to go, you know, get a student loan and, and go back into debt, then, you know, that's fine. Um, but just understand that that's something that you're going, that it's an investment and that you can make the money back. But a lot of people are just like, no, I don't want that anymore. They don't want to take out any loans. But if you want to do this type of program, there's just no way you're, if, unless you have the cash, there's no way you're going to be able to um, not take out a private loan. And private loans are pretty hard to get because a lot of banks have pulled out of the student loan market and I think there's only maybe like eight banks that really do student loan, private student loans anymore. You can qualify for the federal direct loan, Stafford loan, but that's based on need, not credit, and they don't even give you a lot. I think it's up to $12,500 a year, and that's divided between the fall and the spring semester. That does not include the summer, and most accelerated programs run straight through the summer because they want to get you out. You know, you have to complete the program by between 12 and 14 months. So um, that's the caveat with that. Um, you know, I know a lot of people, um, you know, want to do these programs, but again, if you know, you really have to have your ducks in a row and you have to have the finances to, to pull it off. Because not only do you have to consider the money that you're using to pay for school, you also have to consider you still, you, you, you have to have money for housing, you have to have money for transportation, back and forth to school every day, food, just necessary living expenses that you, that you may not be able to provide for yourself because you're busy in school and you can't work. 
Um, so I have to do a part two for this video because um, I have still two other points to, uh, to touch on. So um, I will see you in the next video. Stay tuned, okay? Bye.